If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. We have shown the wire as a circle and we're kind of looking at the wire from the end view of the wire. And in the center of the wire is this purple dot and that's supposed to represent the current that is flowing through the wire. Now we remember that a dot would indicate that whatever vector we're dealing with is pointing out of the page and so we can imagine that this current is flowing out of the page or out of your computer screen towards you and we have labeled that direction the easterly direction and that is because the question noted that the current is indeed moving eastward. So out of the page will be east and that's the direction that the current is flowing. To the right will be north, to the left is south, and then into the page will be west. Now we can draw some f forces that are acting on the wire and we know that since there is a magnetic field present that there will be a magnetic force. The wire is being pushed in the north direction as indicated in the question, so the magnetic force would be pointing in the northerly direction. We can call that force F sub B. But then there's also friction as stated in the question and that is opposing the motion of the wire. So we'll point a force in the opposite direction and we'll label that kinetic friction. We know it's kinetic because the wire is moving. We have a gravitational force that's acting downward on the wire and then there's also a normal force acting on the wire pushing up on it. That's basically the surface pushing up on the wire. Now we can take the two forces that are acting in the x direction and sum them and set them equal to ma. That's Newton's second law which says that the sum of the forces in the x direction would equal the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now presumably the wire is not accelerating. It's moving at a constant velocity. And so because it's not accelerating we can say that the acceleration is zero. That means that the term on the right hand side will become zero since zero times mass is equal to zero. As for the sum of the forces in the x direction we have two forces. We have FB and FK. We can call FB positive since it's pointing to the right and FK negative. So we'll have FB minus FK equal to zero. Let's add the FK over to the other side and we can see that the magnitude of the two forces is equal. And we know from this chapter that the magnetic force is equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field multiplied by the current multiplied by the length of the wire and then multiply by the sine of an angle. Now that angle will be between the magnetic field and the current and we'll talk about that shortly. The kinetic frictional force we know from an earlier chapter is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Let's now turn to the forces acting in the y direction. Once again we know the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. The wire presumably is not accelerating in the y direction either, so we can set AY equal to zero. Just like before, the right hand side of the equation becomes zero. We have the positive normal force and the negative gravitational force, so we would have FN minus MG is equal to zero. And then if we add MG over to the right hand side, we can see that the normal force is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force. Let's substitute an MG in for the normal force right here. Now we recall that the question is asking us to find the magnitude as well as the direction of the magnetic field. Remember magnetic field is symbolized by uppercase B. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by the term I L sine theta. And on the left hand side of the equation that term will cancel out leaving us with just B. Now before we plug in the known values to solve for B, we just need to talk about that angle. Now the question wants the smallest magnetic field, and it turns out that to have the smallest magnetic field, we want to make sure that our magnetic field is pointing perpendicular to our wire. That means the magnetic field is pointing either downward or upward, and our job is to figure out which direction is correct. And to do that, we need to use a right-hand rule. And so here is my attempt at drawing this right hand rule. I apologize, I'm not very good at drawing, but we have the right hand. And the way that we're supposed to do this is we're supposed to point our four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which we don't know, but we're assuming right now it's downward. The thumb would be pointing in the direction of the current, and then your palm would be pointing in the direction of the force. And I always remember that by thinking about my palm pushing on something, 
and exerting a force, for example, like closing a door. So the palm is facing the direction of the force, which we know is to the right. Remember from our free body diagram, we determined that the magnetic force is pointing to the right because it was pointing in the northerly direction as indicated by the question. So we have the magnetic force to the right, we have the current pointing out of the page in this direction, and our fingers therefore would necessarily be naturally pointing downward. That means that the magnetic field direction will indeed be downward. So that actually answers half of the question for the direction of the magnetic field. Now the angle between the magnetic field and the current will be 90 degrees. So we'll fill in 90 for theta. We know the coefficient of friction is 0.2. We know G is 9.8. The current was stated to be 1.5 amps. And then the only thing that needs to be determined is mass and length. The question doesn't give us mass and length. It gives us mass per unit length. That's a common thing in these questions. Notice right here in the equation we have mass divided by length. That term, the entire term, is the mass per unit length. So you're not going to be plugging in an individual value for both m and for l. You'll be plugging in a single value to represent m over l. So we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. The coefficient of friction is 0.2. The term m over l is 1 gram per centimeter. g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The current was 1.5 amps. Remember, we're not plugging anything in for L because we've already accounted for it in the M over L term. And then we multiply by the sine of 90. The only thing that needs to be done is a conversion from grams to kilograms and centimeters to meters. Those need to be put into standard units. And we can do that conversion up here in the numerator. So we know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So that'll cancel out the grams right there. And then we also know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. And if we set up the conversion that way, then these centimeters will cancel out. We'll come up here to report the answer. And when we carefully plug that all into our calculator, we get a value of approximately 0.131. Since we used all standard units, we would get the standard unit for this magnetic field, and that would be Tesla. So this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of the magnetic field, and then the direction, as we noted, was downward.